Okay, in this video, we're going to look at spheres. And a sphere is just a ball, looks like this. A hemisphere means half of a sphere, and it looks like this. So here's my sphere, and there's my half of a sphere. The area of a sphere, you may recall the area of a circle is pi times r squared. Well, the area of a sphere is 4 times pi r squared. We're going to look a little bit more at where that formula comes from in class. But for now, we're just going to use the formula to calculate a couple of areas. So example 1a, I have a sphere with a radius of 9 centimeters. Well, I have my area formula here, so I just plug that in. 4 pi, my radius is 9. So that's 4 pi times 9 squared, 4 pi times 81. And that gives me 324 pi. My units are centimeters squared. I want to calculate the area of this sphere. And now, in this case, I'm given the diameter. Well, if my diameter is 14 inches, my radius is going to be half of that. So I use my formula again and just plug in my radius. 4 pi times my radius squared. So that's 4 pi times 49, which is... 196 pi, and this is in inches squared. Also, by the way, the area of a sphere, you also sometimes hear that called the lateral area or the surface area. So either of those terms, they all mean the same thing. Surface area, lateral area, just other names for the same thing, the outside area of a sphere. The volume of a sphere, the formula for the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So let's look at how we use this formula for these same two spheres that we had before in the previous example. So this one we have a radius of 9 centimeters. I just plug that into my volume formula. 4 thirds times pi times 9 cubed. And now here I'm going to need my calculator to plug in these numbers. So let's see, 9 cubed gives me 729. And if I multiply that times 4 and then divide by 3, I get 972 pi. And my units are centimeters. And this is volume, so I've got centimeters cubed. Example 2b. Again, I'm given the diameter, so I need to first take half of that. That gives me my radius, which is 7. Plug that into my volume formula. 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. And let's see, 7 cubed is. See, 7 cubed is. 343. And if I multiply that times 4 and divide by 3. Then I get 457.3 times pi cubic inches. Now, let's take a look at using the formulas that we have to do some slightly different examples. Here in example number three, I'm told the surface area of a sphere is 324 pi square centimeters, and I'm asked to find the diameter of the sphere. So now we're kind of working backwards a little bit. The surface area of a sphere, 324 pi. Well, I know the formula for the surface area of a sphere. It's 4 pi 
times the radius squared. I'm told the surface area, so I can just plug that in here. 324 pi equals 4 pi times the radius squared. Now I have an equation here, and I would like to solve this equation for the radius. Once I find the radius, then I can calculate the diameter of the sphere. So let's see. If I divide each side of my equation by pi, then that'll make the pi's go away. Now I've got 324 equals 4 pi r squared. Oops, 324 equals 4 r squared. Now if I divide both sides by 4, then I get 81 equals r squared. Now if I take the square root of both sides of this, then I get my radius is equal to 9. But remember, I'm not asked for the radius, I'm asked for the diameter. So the diameter equals 2 times 9, which is, which is 18. And let's see, I'm in centimeters. So 18 centimeters. Example number four. The volume of a sphere is 288 pi cubic centimeters. Find the surface area of the hemisphere. So now in this case, I'm starting out with the volume, and I'm going to have to work my way up to find the surface area of a hemisphere. Well, let's see. I know that the formula for volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and I'm given the volume, so I can plug that in here, 288 pi equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now I can solve this equation for r. So let's see, if I divide both sides by pi, that makes my pi's go away. And if I multiply both sides by 3, and then divide both sides by 4, then that gets rid of my fraction over here and I get let's see, 288 times 3 divided by 4 which gives me 216. Now 216 equals r cubed just like I if, if this had been something equal to r squared I would take the square root of both sides since it's equal to r cubed I'm going to actually take the cube root of both sides. Cube root of 216 equals the cube root of r cubed. Cube root of r cubed is r. And the cube root of 216, I have to get out my calculator for that and punch in the cube root of 16. If you have a TI-84, there's a button here that gives you the math menu. And the cube root is the fourth one down that one, fourth one down. So the cube root of 216 gives me that my radius is equal to 6. Well, so now I know what the radius is. It asks me, what is the surface area of the hemisphere? Well, I have a formula for the surface area of the entire sphere. That's 4 pi times radius squared. So I plug my radius in here. So that's going to be 36 times 4 pi, which is 144 pi. But I want the surface area of the hemisphere, which means I need to take half of that. So the surface area, let's say surface area hemisphere, is half of 144 pi, which is 72 pi. Now, example number five. Example number five says find the volume of this figure. So I have a figure here that looks like a cylinder with a hemisphere sitting on top of it. So if I'm going to try to find the volume of this figure, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this figure into its two component figures. So the volume of my whole figure is going to equal the volume of the cylinder plus the volume of the hemisphere. Well, I have formulas for both of these. The volume of a cylinder 
remember, is the area of the base times the height of the cylinder. The volume of a hemisphere, you see the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the volume of a hemisphere is going to be one half of that. So all I need to do now is plug in these missing values here. So let's see the area of my base. Well, my base in this case is a circle. That's the base of my cylinder. And let's see, I know the radius of my base. So I can say pi times radius squared. That gives me the area of my base of my cylinder times the height of my cylinder. <coughs> The height of my cylinder is 18, so there's my volume of my cylinder. I need one half times four thirds times pi times radius cubed. Well, again, my radius of my hemisphere is eight, so I need eight cubed. Now I have all my numbers filled in here, I just need to punch those into my calculator and I get 1000 pi, I'm looking at volume here, my units are millimeters, so that's 1000 pi cubic millimeters. Now finally example number six. Example number six says a cone is surrounded by a sphere. Find the volume of the space between the cone and the sphere. So you kind of have to use your imagination a little bit here with the picture. There's a cone and there's a sphere. There's a cone inside the sphere. I want to know what's the volume of the space that is between the cone and the sphere. So I'm given the diameter of my sphere, which is also the diameter of the base of my cone. Well, since I'm looking for the volume of a, spa of a space in between these two objects, that total volume is just going to be the volume of the sphere minus the volume of the cone. Well, I know how to calculate the volume of a sphere. That's 4 thirds times pi r cubed. And I also know how to calculate the volume of a cone. That's just 1 third times the area of the base times the height. So I can get those values from my picture. And just like I did up here, I can put those numbers in here and calculate the volume of the space between the sphere and the cone. And I'm going to leave that for you to try. And we'll take a look at that tomorrow in class.